Hey gang, Professor McElroy here. Uh, we've made it to week four, learning module four. Uh, we're into our post-course assessments. Uh, this is the time in the session where I normally say, you know, you have until Sunday night at midnight to turn in any outstanding work from the first three learning modules. But I believe everyone in this session has completed every required element from learning modules one, two, and three. So that's really awesome. Kudos to each of you for staying on track, uh, keeping your projects rolling along, not letting anything kind of build up and get too delayed. Uh, I think the modules are set up for success. I think doing the, the mini book projects and then ending each learning module with a out of book assessment, I think is a really great way to learn the granular skills of both a software application and the professional design application of what we're trying to learn. So really great job. By the time we get to this third course in the three course sequence of basic graphic design skills, uh, most students have a pretty good grasp of the process, what we're working on, kind of how we're learning and kind of keeping with the process that we've kind of built from one course to the next. So really good job there. Uh, that brings us on to our post-course assessment. I wanna spend a couple of minutes just kind of previewing our post-course project, kind of talking about the outcomes, the expectations, kind of what I'm looking for uh, as we're building our final project for VizCom class. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to really spread your wings in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, uh, apply some of those uh, professional design elements that we've learned through. Really our book projects are very, very good at uh, putting together a framework uh, design application, kind of an output that is a professionally applied project. Uh, and everyone's done a really good job with that. The templates in InDesign, the images, the layouts, the posters, the advertising in Photoshop, the digital illustrations, the logos, the vector artwork, and Illustrator, uh, really, really good at, at the third class of this three cl class process, a uh, really good, I think, professional assignments. It's a Adobe Press process. So they're being, they're set up to teach you uh, towards the final output, but I still think they do a really good job each year updating the projects themselves, but still keeping you, teaching you those little basic uh, outcomes, professional outcomes, kind of as we navigate through the three primary software applications. So hopefully you're feeling a little bit more comfortable in Photoshop with image manipulation, a little bit more comfortable in Illustrator with vector drawing, and a little bit more comfortable in InDesign with multi-page layout. Uh, those are the three applications we've been tackling this session. Uh, next, next month I see on the schedule that we have uh, more of a digital multimedia type stuff. We have video uh, editing uh, for Animation 2 class and we have Adobe Animate, which is uh, starts out as frame by frame two-dimensional animation. So uh, this course really is kind of those foundational, uh, I don't wanna say print-based because a lot of these three applications have a multimedia output, uh, but they were built on the bones or the basic uh, elementary structure uh, skill outcomes for a graphic designer or a commercial artist or whatever you wanna call us. So uh, we're diving into our final project here. So of course, our final project is gonna require us touching Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. We're gonna call it a five page brochure, but quite honestly, just because it's an InDesign, does it mean that it can't be outputted for a multimedia solution, whether it be an app or a multimedia application? Uh, we're going to deal with a charity of your choice, or I always do religious institution. Maybe there's a church you go to and you'd really like to build a little info booklet uh, for your church or any other kind of religious institution. So I always like to give charity or and or religious institution as our final brochure project. So up to you which one you pick. Uh, the student sample, which is a really, really strong framework of kind of the level of output we're looking for in your final project, chose Catholic Charities. So remember that nonprofits, charities, religious institutions, you know, this project, we're kind of focused on uh, adults, professionals, 
uh, people that could potentially donate to the cause, to the charity. Uh, we're gonna be building this uh, five page brochure with a cover image an original logo for the nonprofit. I'd like to see at least two illustrations as part of your layout. So in essence, a cover page and four interior pages. Remember saving your original source files. So if it's image, manipulate it and save it as a PSD. If it's a vector illustration, save it as your illustrator file or .ai. Import those source files into InDesign, which should be the place that houses your five page digital layout. And you will save it as a PDF for me. Uh, the proportions of this is going to be a 16 by nine proportion or 1024 by 768. Because it is a multimedia output, you'll be working in print output in InDesign. But remember this thing actually is gonna be produced at a lower resolution for our multimedia solution. So traditionally 1024 by 768 is 16 by nine or landscape and format. I'd like you to keep that format so make it landscape, not portrait. It's not a vertical poster. It's a horizontal wireframe in essence. Uh, so you'll see Salvation Army. Uh, there's some really great uh, frameworks in the, this design firm site for nonprofit wireframe designs. Uh, you, there's a charity.pdf in here, but I wanna open up, I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes with uh, one of our student submissions we had last session when we were doing this particular project because the student did a really, really good job. Uh, they created their own Catholic Charities logo. They actually reintroduced a new color palette. Uh, so let me just expand the window here a little bit so we can kind of see what this thing looks like. Uh, actually, let me download it and I'll be able to open it in my own PDF reader, which will make life a little bit easier for us from an analysis standpoint. So let's dump that over, go ahead and open it up. So here is the cover page with the original logo design, a couple images for the Catholic charities and a call to action, providing help, creating hope, serving all which brings us now to our four pages of our 16 by nine wireframe design or our multimedia uh, brochure PDF, uh, which will be the framework for our layout. You'll notice the consistency of typography, the consistency of color, in this case, a header element combined with a two third, one third layout, two thirds here, one third here, for our image and text elements. And you're gonna notice page one really is just defining the services of the Catholic Charities. When you get into uh, page two, you're gonna notice logo that was created originally on the homepage becomes a footer element. You're gonna notice the placement of images, the consistency of color application, the consistency of typography, the consistent use of font, the use of all caps for creating hope, all caps for creating hope, all caps for providing help, all caps for providing help, all caps for serving all, same typography, same color palette, very consistent use from cover page to interior content pages. Be careful when you're producing elements that are textual in nature that you give yourself a little breathing room from the bleed or the edge of your design and where the copy is placed, right? You don't want anything too close to the edge. If the image wasn't meant to be a bleed, make sure there's a little room on the edge of the layout. You'll notice that this image is a full bleed, so it goes to the edge of the document versus this image collage that is not on the edge of the document. You'll notice this is in essence a three color application. White is the paper color. We have purple, we have this teal color, kind of this blue green, and then we have a tint or 50% of the teal blue green, which becomes our background color element. Really good job by this student to be consistent with the cover create a really nice original logo design using two colors. Take those two colors and make them elements in the layout, the legibility, 
the readability, the use of columns, the gutters, the space, the bleeds, the margins, everything very consistent. Three column layout versus two column layout, but still a two third by one third layout. Really good job by this student. One thing I would say that was deducted in the process of grading this is the hyphenation. See the hyphenations in these words? You should not have hyphenations in your body copy on a brochure. And the second thing was you shouldn't have any widow characters or words hanging at the bottom of a paragraph. See how this is just one word amongst the paragraph with hyphenation. If the student would have removed the hyphenation from this paragraph, it would have added two to three additional words to the bottom of this chunk, this paragraph chunk, this body copy, and it wouldn't have made this weird little widow hanging at the bottom of the paragraph. And also be careful, you'll notice in InDesign sometimes, if you don't hit enter after the last line of copy you're making in your copy, you will get a weird spacing here with your leading. You want to make sure that your letting is consistent across each of the lines of your body copy. This is an extra space because there was a greater letting setting at the bottom of this uh, textual paragraph. So if you would have just hit enter after the word centers and period, this would have bumped up and it would have been the correct spacing. You'll also see it at the top here, not an inconsistent use of letting because enter wasn't hit after which means there was space after this period and the space after this period had greater letting, greater spacing between lines than the spacing in the words themselves. So just be aware of that. There shouldn't be any weird letting or kerning spacing issues. There shouldn't be any hyphenation. There shouldn't be any words too close to the edge of your document. And there should be an essence of column layout in a two third by one third environment, which you can see right here. It doesn't mean that it, you can't have it be two column, but you see how that shape goes two thirds way across the page. And this is one third of the page with this paragraph, even though I could draw a line right through the middle of this layout, this layout, even in a two column environment is set up in a two third by one third situation. Uh, you'll notice here, the image is a large image. I would have preferred this image to eat a little bit further over. So it was more of a two third by one third. I don't believe this is a natural 50-50, but it's close enough to 50-50 that the student should have made a choice between more image than text or more text than image. So just be aware of that when you're doing your layout, that it should be two third by one third in a column environment. And you are laying this out inside of InDesign, photo manipulation in Photoshop, illustration work in Illustrator, but composition layout, InDesign. Yes, you could do this project on Photoshop. Yes, you could do this project all in Illustrator. Yes, you could do this project all in PowerPoint. You could do this whole project in Adobe XD, but we're laying it out in a multi-page traditional environment, which is Adobe InDesign, which is our learning module three projects. Uh, we actually have a couple of really nice templates uh, already built in InDesign under the template menu or one of the templates from one of the magazine layouts that you did for one of your projects might even be a really nice template to use as your template for laying out this assignment. Just remember it needs to be in a landscape format, a 16 by nine format, so that we get a multimedia output, a screen output from our final project. And you'll notice the last page of the student's layout is the back cover. So page one is the front cover, page two, three and four are our call to action or information pages and page four is our back cover. And you'll note, or page five is our back cover. You'll notice the logo is on the front cover right here and on the back cover right here. Back covers traditionally are for branding, content information, contact information and social media and or web website 
information. So make sure that the logo is on your front cover, page one, and your back cover, page five. Make sure that your social media and or web links are on page five. Make sure that your contact information is on page five. This student also chose, because it was Catholic Charities, to show all the locations in Southwest Florida, which is a really nice touch too. That is background information. That's back cover information because it reinforces the local chapter and all the additional available locations, <coughs> excuse me, and or chapters. Really good job by this student to do front cover, back cover, and three interior content covers. And the student did a really good job of doing the mission statements, three of them, and using those three mission statements to be the three interior content pages, being very consistent with color application and typography. This wouldn't be as successful as providing help was all caps on the cover, but page one that was providing helps was in upper and lower case. You need to be very consistent with typography. Be aware of it. Be, be aware of the fonts you choose. Be aware of the color application. All very consistent usage for consistent layout. Be aware of letting and kerning. Remember, body copy, use bold and italic to reinforce certain elements of your body copy. Notice the beautiful typography here, which is consistent with the typography here, which is different than the body copy. You should use a minimum of two typefaces, one more sans serif or body copy in nature, and more either script or serif decorative for the larger elements of your layer layout. So larger elements tend to be a little more decorative, smaller elements, which are body copy, seem to be a little bit more traditional in nature. Legibility and readability is real important. So you can't use this font in your body copy. You need to have something more legible and readable. So just be aware of that when you're laying out your elements. Two typefaces, a color palette that's consistent, a logo that uses a certain color system, whether it be two color or three color, and then applying those colors into your design for consistency of branding. By nature, white background is the easiest background color to work with because it allows for great legibility and readability, but I have had students do dark backgrounds with white typeset and it has been very well done as well, beautifully done and still legible and readable. Just be careful of watermarks, dark colors and textures in the background. If you use an illustration as a background element or a texture or a photograph or a dark color, make sure the legibility and readability of your type is there. Your body copy should be anywhere between 12 point and let's say 18 point. I would not go over 18 point for body copy, which then means 12 point body copy should have a minimum of 24 to 36 point call to action elements or category elements or main heading elements. If you're pushing your body copy closer to 18 point, then you definitely want to have your main header elements, your call to action elements, closer to the 36 to 48 range. White space is your friend. Try not to overcrowd, but also try not to make it boring, blank, uh, not a lot of elements, uh, bland. You want to make sure that you lay out your three interior content pages thoughtfully in two third, one third with plenty of copy and plenty of, of image elements. So make sure that you balance your page well. This student did a really good job with three call, three basic outcomes or call to actions for this charity, which made the three interior pages really easy because all you had to do was find out the information, how they provided help, how they created hope, and how they serviced all. So 
that st this student did a really smart job there. So you might consider finding three call to actions for your charity and make your three interior pages. Remember, you have Vecteezy for vector graphics, you have Pexels for photograph. If you choose to do Google as an image search, please make sure that your images are large images. Remember when placed in InDesign, they come in as high quality or high resolution or high print images. So if they come in really small and you have to scale them up, they're gonna be blurry. Please, no blurry images. I lean towards vector art, illustrator files, because they're scalable. You can make them as big as small as you want in your layout and they're still crystal clear. When you go to pixel-based image solutions, Dot .psd files, dot .photoshop files, jpegs, pngs, tiffs, those kinds of files, they're tied to resolution. InDesign works in 300 dpi environment. So if you have to scale up your image, stop, find another image. Do not scale up your photographs in your layout. They will be blurry. You will lose points for blurry images. No hyphenations, no one word widow lines. Make sure that you follow the basic rules. There should be gutters. There should be margins. You should have breathing room between your text and your images. Your text should not run right on top of your images. If you put your type inside of a container like this is, it should not be tight to the top, tight to the bottom, tight to the right, tight to the left. See how there's plenty of breathing room around this type inside this color shape with an image in it, nothing on top of each other. Even this bulleted list, nice spacing next to the bulleted list, nice margin on this side, nice margin on this side. This is left aligned, but this is center aligned to give nice balance inside of this box. Nothing feels cramped, even here. Plenty of space between the text and the image, even though the image is feathered on the edge. This type should not run right to the edge of the image. If you use the student PDF as a template, you'll be off to a really good start. Just make sure that you don't have any hyphenated words or any widow little hanging words like this. They should have hit enter and moved capital assets to the next line or used an ampersand instead of the word end to move assets up to this line or move the bullets over ever so slightly so you have more room to move this word up to this line. We're looking for clean layout, cleanliness of layout, good use of typography, good use of elements, good balance <laughs> in a column environment, plenty of margin space, plenty of bleed areas. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> Reference your book. Your InDesign has beautiful layouts in all of its chapter assignments. So reference those elements because they're really well done or take a look at the links I have in the projects that will really help you be inspired hopefully by some professional solutions. So let's see if we can't really produce a beautiful five page charity driven brochure that has a front cover, a back cover, and three content areas using a three to four color process, two fonts minimum, an original logo, and a gathering of your own images, illustrations, and text in a thoughtful final design solution. Everyone's done so well in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign through our first three learning modules. Let's keep that positive mojo going and let's create a beautiful final post-course assessment. So with that being said, this was my 25 minute intro to your final post-course project. The rest of week four, always in my classes when I am able to, Sometimes holidays get in the way, sometimes illness gets in the way, but if I'm able to, I like to give week four the full week to work on your post-course assessment. If you finish it a little early, you can always send me a PDF for critiquing. You can email it to me. I'll take a look at it. I'll see if there's anything standing out that I would like you to adjust prior to your final submission. Please remember that Sunday night at midnight is the end of the session. And I'm gonna kind of be hard lined with that because we have a full week to do our final project. Everyone is through their first three learning modules already. So we have a full week to do our final project. Uh, next month I have digital animation one and two. 
So I'll hit the ground running again next Monday with a Monday night and Tuesday night class. Everyone have a great week. I hope everyone is staying healthy. I hope everyone is uh, uh, doing well uh, professionally, personally. I hope everything is well with everyone uh, and have a great week. I see I have a chat in the chat window. So I'm gonna mute and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna go in the chat window to answer any questions.